Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Cincinnati USA Regional Chambers webinar. It's how to process your certificate of origin online. So if you're at the wrong one, uh, stay with us anyway. Uh, I'm Barbara Meehan with the Cincinnati Chambers Membership Development Team. And uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon to walk through this new and improved certificate of origin process. Um, over the next hour or so, it probably won't last that long. We're gonna have a uh, chat question and answer at the end. We ask that you submit any questions by using the chat uh, function in Zoom, and we will cover as many questions as possible. Um, I'd like to start by introducing Wendy Baggett. Wendy, give him a wave. She's president and CEO of the American World Trade Chamber of Commerce. Wendy was the first chamber executive in the United States to earn accreditation for International Certificate of Origin, ICC, training from the International Chamber of Commerce World Chambers Federation, WCF. She serves on the ICC WCF International Certificate of Origin Council as the United States representative. Wendy is active in her community by serving on numerous nonprofit boards focused on business growth, education, financial literacy, community improvement, cultural enrichment, and leadership development. Thanks so much for being here today, Wendy. The AWTCC is our partner in online certificate of origin processing. They are a national chamber dedicated to encouraging the export of goods and services from the United States by providing international best practices and compliance solutions. The Cincinnati Chamber introduced the online certification process to our members back in 2018, two years ago. We've been able to process all COOs online through AWTCC since then. Aside from some of our members who participated in, we formerly had a stamp rental program. So the rental program will be discontinued in 2021. And so that's why we felt it necessary to do this webinar. Um, we're all, we all have been very flexible with the pandemic. So what better year, 2021, to start some more uh, changes. If you have a 2020 Chamber Certificate of Origin stamp, uh, you're required to return that stamp to the Chamber offices via return mail. Uh, email members at CincinnatiChamber.com if you have any questions. And that should be... Uh, drop down into the chat reference. So without further ado, Wendy, can you kick us off by talking about the online process and showing us a brief demo of how easy this process really is? Thank you. Thank you, Barb, and welcome everyone. Um, I've got some great information for you today. I first want to um, share my screen and go over some general information with you, and then we'll do an actual walkthrough um, of how easy it is to use the system. So um, as Barbara said, we're the international partner for the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber. Um, our uh, process allows different chambers around the country um, to, to work with us and uh, we provide that training and expertise on that international level um, that they're looking for. <clears throat> so I assume you all know what a certificate of origin is. Uh, you're on this call to find out about certificates of origin. You might need them for an actual shipping, you might need them for a letter of credit, different reasons. Um, but this is the main product that uh, we offer is this. Um, Barb gave a little introduction about who we are and how we're working with the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber. One of the things I, well, there's two things I wanna highlight. Number one, as the representative, the US representative on the CO Council, um, I am part of any rule changes, rule making, we just rewrote the guidelines for certificates of origin. So when there are changes or when there are rules um, that apply for specific uh, documents, I am right there in the thick of things and usually have great insight um, that we can help you with. 
And the other thing is we are the only chamber in the US that's been admitted to the ICC International Accreditation Chain. This means a couple of things. First of all, your, your documents can be verified online through the ICC. And many customs are using that nowadays to, um, to, to verify that it's been um, chamberized, let's say, by uh, an accredited chamber. And especially there's so much fraud, um, with, especially with COVID, and there are so many chambers in the United States who do not understand what they're doing that this has become very valuable to the people who use our system. Some of those um, benefits of that accreditation, like I said, is the level of acceptance by the customs around the world, um, provide defense against possible false declarations. I see fake documents every single week. And we have two ways to identify those documents through our own uh, software provider where they can actually view a copy of the entire document. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, through the International Chamber of Commerce. So those are the benefits that we wanna bring to you as the exporter to help expedite your shipping needs. Our, our two focuses are compliance and security. We use the international template for certificates of origin. Uh, it's got a security background on it. It's got a barcode on it. It's got a U U R U <laughs> QR code on it. It's got um, a unique identifier on it. Uh, and we also are able to help with uh, legalization services. So if you need your um, documents to go to the Middle East and Egypt consulate has to sign it, that's fine. We can help with that. We actually have heard um, just in the past couple of weeks that if you're shipping food products to India, you're probably going to need our stamp on your documents. We've gotten a lot of business from that lately. And then our other focus is security. Everything is done through a secure web-based platform. We don't email the documents to you. You log in and print them out yourself, which I'll show you how to do. Um, like I said, we've got that serial number and background on there, full verifiability, and we use tokenization for our credit card. So your number's not stored in there. And if the um, super user puts a credit card in, everyone can uh, all the additional users can still use that credit card and they don't see it. So um, it's very secure for that. Uh, the way forward we're talking about here is electronic certification. It saves a lot of time. You can do the printing right at your desk. You don't have to go to the chamber. I realize if you had a stamp before that uh, it might take a little extra time because that stamp is not right there on your desk. But honestly, um, the stamp is the chamber's corporate seal. So um, renting it out is just, it's against the guidelines. So your next best thing is to take it to the chamber and this will help save time on that. Um, everything is usually, uh, it, it won't allow you to forget a field. So your documents are completed um, in, a, in, a, in a manner that customs is going to accept. Uh, we also use software as a service model, so you only pay for what you need. There's no um, extra payments or registration, anything like that. There's also an online archive with everything in there, so if you ever need to access, uh, right now we keep them for up to 10 years. And of course, we provide support. So what kind of documents do we chamberize? Mostly certificates of origin, and a close, close second is commercial invoices. We also can chamberize other support documentation. So um, if you need your EEI um, legalized for Turkey, things like that, we can do that. We do a lot of certificates of free sale. We do not certify any documents that have been produced by the government as they're over us. So we don't, we don't do those, but others we can do. Um, so the first step is registering to use the system. And Barb has that registration um, form. You can also register online. So I'm going to stop this screen and go over to our um, 
login screen and show you how to apply for a certificate of origin. So once you're logged into the portal and when you register for the system, you get instructions on how to log in. You have uh, every user has a unique login password. Uh, and we really prefer that everyone who's going to be doing this has their own login rather than a central login. When items are rejected or we need more information or they're completed, an email is generated by the system to the user. So if you're using someone else's login and we needed some clarification on something, we sent an, an the system sent an email, you don't have that information and then your document sits in there and un, until you log in and say, hey, what happened to my document? So we really want everyone to have their own login. All right, so applying for, this is the active application screen, which is the page you come to when you log into the system. And to apply for a certificate of origin, you just open this drop down menu and you see there's only two choices other document and certificate of origin. We're going to start with certificate of origin. So you choose it and click the apply button. It opens up a page. So at the top of the page is just the header. This is who the client is. I've got my information in there. Application history. So just below this is it starts immediately. Any attachments that you want to upload to the application, you would do here now. For every certificate of origin that you're going to apply for, we have to see your commercial invoice. It does not have to be um, certified. The chamber doesn't need to stamp it. But what we're doing is looking at um, the documentation on your invoice and the documentation on your certificate of origin to make sure that they match. When there are discrepancies, we reject your certificate for you so that you can fix those problems. Uh, we want your documents to be correct. So what I've done is just uploaded a, a PDF here. Um, it's not really an invoice, but doesn't matter for our purposes. And if I do not need it stamped by the chamber, I'm, I'm just going to leave these boxes here blank. But if it is a commercial invoice going to a country that requires it, all I need to put is a little tick here, and then the chamber knows to go ahead and stamp that document as well. So this box is just tick and untick depending on what you need. I'm going to come back to this box in a minute. So then as you move down, this shaded area is the area for the certificate of origin. So number one is the consignor. This is you. Um, and you're, once you put your, your, once you do your first one, it's stored in here forever. So you don't have to type in the information. It just automatically populates. Uh, box number two is the consignee. Again, once you save one, it populates in there, but for a new, the first time you use someone, you would click this add consignee. We'll put them in here, test number two. The address, 123 Street, um, Detroit, Michigan country, United States, and we'll submit, save the changes, and it goes in here. Now, when we want to do it, it's already in here. I already had a test client here. I could change, or I could go to my test two client. So once you've done it, it's in there forever. Box three is the country of origin. Please remember, origin refers to the country of manufacture not the country it's being shipped from. So if it was made in India, but it came here and now you're shipping it overseas, it is not US um, origin. So country of origin refers to country of manufacture. Uh, you can have multiple origins on a CO. So I've got something This says right here, hold down the control key and click multiple countries to indicate multiple countries of origin. So I've got stuff from the United States, I've got stuff from Afghanistan, and I've got stuff from Andorra, all on this um, invoice and the shipment. So I will highlight those, click select, 
and it will list them down here for me. Box four is the transport details. Uh, we're gonna say it's by ocean freight. And if I want to, I can add the ship here. I can add the container. I can add any type of information, the port, whatever we wanna add. Okay, box five is remarks. Um, anything you wanna add onto your certificate, um, please do not stamp, con uh, stack containers. Whatever it is you wanna add can be in here. If you want to add your letter of credit number, you can add that in here as well. So uh, there's an optional box here for repetitive text. If it's something that you always want on your certificate of origin, you can add it just like we added the consignor and it will always have that text here that you can, so if you wanna add, please do not stack containers, you can add that here. And then it always goes on all of your stuff. Box six is the item itself. We would love for this to match the commercial invoice. The closer it is to the commercial invoice, the better it is. So you cannot just say six boxes because that is not necessarily what you're getting shipped unless it's empty boxes that you're putting together. So six boxes, um, if you wanna say boxes, six boxes of um, widgets. <laughs> We're gonna use widgets. You can put in your HTS code here if you want to. Um, you can put anything, this is free form right here. If the really the ones that we love are when you've gone over to your invoice, copied your information there and pasted it right in here. It tells exactly what the things are. And there's no need to put, especially if everything's from one origin, if it's all US origin, there's no need to note that in this box because we've noted it up in box three. So then the last box is box seven, the quantity and gross weight. Um, you can put in here something as, you know, six boxes, or there's a weight tool here that you can just fill in the kilograms um, and it, it types it for us uh, on the finished product. So that's it, seven boxes for the certificate of origin. We're gonna go back up here to the top on the right-hand side. And these are the things that we can do. This is the status of our application. So before I submit it, I'm going to add in my invoice number. And this is your, usually the same invoice number as what you uploaded here. So that um, in the future, if you need to look this up in the archives, you're able to find that invoice number. This invoice amount would be for your commercial invoice. So it's um, it's not an obligatory field. You don't have to fill that in if you don't want to. You can, you don't have to. This box here, comments and special instructions is for the chamber. So if you want anything special for the chamber, you would note that in this box. All right, one thing I said I was gonna come back to is the embassy legalize. So many times um, you will need the documents to be legalized, especially for the Middle East by the consulate or the embassy. And many of you probably do that on your own. If you need help with that, we offer that as an additional service. So if you're interested in getting the certificate of origin only legalized, you would tick this box. If you also need the invoice legalized, you would tick that box. So this is just, um, and, and we always give quotes before we do this, so you have an opportunity to accept it or decline it, whichever, whatever your need might be. And we, we work with you individually on that. So you can save this draft. Um, so this save draft just saves as you're working. This save lets you save it and come back to it later. And then there's a delete. Um, button if you say, oh yeah, this is not what I want. Let's just skip this. Uh, so I'm going to submit. And the next screen that pops up is how do you want the document delivered to you? So there's two options. The most common is self-service, meaning you are going to print the document at your desk. 
So these are the electronic documents. Um, Self-service or DIY, we call it. There's a, the other option is chamber printed. So anytime you need legalization, it has to be chamber printed. And some documents require that. So um, certificate of free sale, some of the others require chamber printed. So you select that um, type of whatever it is and your credit card information is saved in here. That pops up next. And then you just submit and it goes to the chamber. So it just says, I just submitted this one right here, test two, and it says it's at the chamber. So then you wait on the chamber to look at the two documents, approve it, and you'll get an email automatically saying it's approved or rejected. So here's one that's been approved. I had, did this a little bit earlier and it's ready to be issued on your end. So right over here to the far right is a button that says issue. I'm going to issue that document. It says, you must print this document on plain paper. Are you ready to continue? You say, okay, up pops the document. All right, you click on the print button. And the reason I pulled this up is I wanna show you, this is the completed document. So it gave it a, a number here, a reference number in the top middle. And right below it, it says verify at certificateoforigin.com. So if your user has this unique number right here, they can actually, your, your importer, they can actually take a look at this actual document as it is. And you won't need to email the original document. If they can print that out and use it that way, that's fine. So this shows the box one is you, box two is the consignee we put in, box three is the country of origin. Remember, this is not the one I just did. This is one I did earlier. I only chose one country. Box four was transport details. There was nothing in remarks. Box six, I just put in test. It adds this line, no further addition allowed. And box seven, I just put in one. Again, it adds a line. You can see the security background. There's also a verification site right here for the International Chamber of Commerce, certificates.iccwbo.org, where they can see that it was done by an accredited chamber. Our name, date, and stamp comes up here at the bottom. And you can see there's the QR code. Along with it is a copy for you. So this is designated copy. It's not signed, it's just a copy. And then the attachment is also here. So you can see I attached the uh, registration form and stamped it. And the system gave it a number. Let's see that number, my thing is over it. It gave it the reference number 121878. And that goes along with this document that we just issued 121878. So when you upload your support material with your certificate of origin, it cross references those those documents together. And so then you just print and you're done, you're done um, issuing it. You've got it finished. One thing I wanted to show you. Um, no, I'm not going to show you. We're going to go on to an other document. All right. So that's certificate of origin. Let's do other documents. So you would do apply. Let's say you created your own certificate of origin and you don't want to use ours. I know that question has come up. Um, you certainly can do that. But remember, the benefits of using ours are the security background, the code that's generated, the verifiability. When you upload your own template, we that information is not transferred to the websites for verification. So customs can't verify that. So it looks the same when you log in, same information at the top. This time it just has several um, attachments that you can, so you're gonna sub attach your certificate of origin and you're going to also, that we're going to certify. So we'll tick the box, it's already ticked. You also might attach a health certificate or a 
uh, certificate of conformity or your bill of lading or your, I don't know, whatever you might need. Uh, let's put a packing list on here. And if you select, once you select the third one, it gives you more boxes. So you can select as many as you need to. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got your reference number for this uh, application, the country where it's going, and then your information. So you don't need to fill out all that other information again. Um, your reference number, your amount if you want, notes to the um, chamber, and then you just submit your document. And again, you have the choice of self-service or chamber printed where we express mail it to you. We'll submit that, it goes right to the chamber and they'll approve or reject from there. When you get a rejection, it shows up in the screen as well, active applications. So this is your screen for that as well. Uh, archive, you can look up any documents that have been done in the past. I'm gonna show you this too. For the certificate of origin, if you want, once it's done, there's a button here that says client copy. If you print this button, it generates a copy of what the certificate of origin looks like. And you can send this to your customer to approve before submitting to the chamber. Um, once the chamber approves your document and you've issued it, any changes are like starting over. Um, document, documents can't be edited and changed because the ICC doesn't have that capability with their verification services. So they just have to be done again. Um, we've got a data library that has a certificate of free sale application, some other information, repetitive text. You can see all your consignees that might be um, housed under your name. Um, there's also a reporting tool. And then in the My Account um, tab, this is where you can add users, you can change your password, you can change your profile name, you can, you know, whatever it is you need to do. So this gives you an overview. Um, you see that there's a number of different certificates you can apply for. There's a couple of ways you can have them returned. Um, you can also do additional services on them if you need to. And um, I think I will, I don't know if there's been any questions. I, I haven't seen yeah. the chat while I was yeah, uh, yeah, there has working. Been. So Wendy, I have one, I have one. That, <laughs> could you just repeat everything you just said? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, but it's recorded for future. I know. So if you need to watch it again, you can do that. Yes, I wanted to tell, tell our members <laughs> that. Also, um, I wanted to, before we answer some of the chats or- Yes. Um, I want to introduce Katie Egan. Katie, give a little smile. She's uh, the Vice President of Government Affairs. And recently, this, depart this division of the chamber uh, got to take this on. So they've absorbed this responsibility. So we appreciate Wendy being patient with us um, and the members as well. And then Hannah Boone, um, she may, there she is. She also works with Katie and Hannah is an excellent resource because she used to work customer focus and now she also works for the government affairs department. Um, and really quickly, Barb, if I might. Um, yes, we understand no, please. that there are gonna be questions as this, as this process changes, not only changes um, ownership within the chamber, but the process itself changes completely. So please, um, Hannah and I will both enter our contact information into the chat. And please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, if you have any questions moving forward. And I'm sure there will be uh, plenty, but thank you. Okay, so are we gonna, you wanna go through line by line of the questions on chat? All right. Wendy, you want me to read it out and then you can just answer or what? Sure, okay, sure. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's see. 
first, I think the first one was um, perhaps I missed it, but are you charging per company issuance? Yes. Katie, did you want to answer that? I was going to say, um, yes, the chamber will be will be charging per issuance. I know that for those of you who had used the stamp previously, this you may see an increase in costs. Um, we do not expect you to um, shoulder that all on your own. So we will be having uh, discussions about um, bulk discounts and we'll be talking to you individually about that. So if please um, give me a call, shoot me, shoot me an email. We wanna be able to talk um, through this and make sure that this is, um, that it works for you and your company um, as best possible. Cause we know that this is a pretty significant change. So we wanna make sure that this works for everyone. It, it is also $30 uh, per document for members and then $60 per non-members. So that's a big difference. And I'll talk, to, talk about membership before we hang up today too. All right, um, does that answer the first question? Yes. Okay, uh, let's see, my little mouse. Okay, can you save edited addresses in the consignee section? You covered that? Yes. yes. So uh, as you save those in there, if you've made a mistake or if something has changed, you can go to the data library and that's where you can change their address. So if you've ever made a mistake in there, yes, those can be edited. And then it also says, can you create uh, or print a draft before you submit the COO to be certified? Do you also? Yes, and that's that? that print client copy where it generates that client copy. And, and you can let your application sit in here for as long as you like. If it takes three weeks for your clients to approve it, you can let it sit in there. Uh, and I, I would really recommend doing that before submitting it to the chamber. Like I said, once you submit it, it can't be changed. All right, what is the difference between certification and legalization? So I talk about certification being the chamber stamp and legalization being the consulate stamp. Most consulates don't require putting their additional stamp on it, but we see that very often for the Middle East. We see it for Egypt. Boy, it just seems Egypt more and more and more is wanting it, whereas other countries are less and less. So, um, some, you know, the most common ones are those Iraq, Qatar, Kuwait, Egypt, um, those consul. And so we send it out to not only the consulate, but any interim stamps that it may, might require, Secretary of State, U.S. Department of State, that sort of thing. And and while we're talking about extra stamps, um, I I don't know if you noticed, there was no place for notary on there. So our certificates do not need to be notarized unless they're going for further legalization. Thank you, Wendy. If this says, if you have multiple origins, how is the CO set up to match the right origin to the individual items? It, it is not. Uh, set up to do it that way. If you have multiple origins in box six, you can put that in there if your customer requires it. If they don't, it, then it's um, delineated on the invoice, commercial invoice. Awesome. Uh, let's see. If you ship the same product multiple times month per, or per year, can the data be saved? You kind of... Yes, you can use yeah, you that repetitive that. text to put in anything you'd like to put in. Or it says, or oh, will you need to scratch, start from scratch every time, so no. No, also there is, um, once your document has been approved, you can view the document by opening up the application and there's a button in there that says copy. And you click that button and it creates a brand new certificate of origin for you with the exact same information. So if you need to edit something a little, you can do that. But if it's exactly the same, you just copy it and you're done. Okay. Uh, you said you could see any docs generated in the past. Does that mean all docs created by anyone under the master login? Yes. Okay, that was an easy answer. Um, <laughs> perhaps I missed it, but are you charging per company issuance, CO issuance? 
Yes, you said that. Are these accepted by overseas companies that require original COOs? Okay. Yes, you know, uh, I know that all of you know this, but it seems to be a kind of a superstitious uh, business and, and everyone says, oh no, we had one printed out one time and so we always need it that way. And that's really not the case. We actually do electronic documents to every single country. We don't do only electronic. So we know that we know that it's either the customer or someone in a weird customs location. But but there are electronic documents done for every country in the world. All right. We are a freight forwarder holding power of attorney to create documents for our customers. Are we able to create certificate of origins for multiple clients? Would we need a different login for each client? No, just as you saved diff multiple consignees in box two, you can save multiple consignors in box one. So you can create them on behalf of your customers with their information in box one, and it remembers it. Awesome. Um, what is the turnaround time once the certificate of origin is submitted? So we process until 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we guarantee to same day service. Honestly, it's usually half an hour, within a half an hour or an hour, um, but we guarantee same day. By the way, will it have embossed seal like we are currently using as we issue a lot of certificate of origins? No, and the, you don't need embossed seal for 95% of the countries. The only time you need an embossed seal is when it goes on for legalization. So if we're gonna send it to Iraq, you would choose chamber printed, and that's where we actually print it out in our office, hand sign it, hand stamp it, hand emboss it, and then send it out for legalization. So if you want to request an embossed certificate, you have to choose chamber printed, and in those special instructions to the chamber, you could say need embossed certificate. Thank you. Um, will you provide, and then Hannah, maybe you could do this, uh, or you maybe I already did, I can't see all of this. Will you provide the link for login and register on this website? Um, so that's really, you can get that off of our website, the Chamber's website. Yeah. 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 Uh, I send that out a lot. Um, you already answered this, but how long does it take for review and response after completion of form? Did that. Yeah. Um, sorry if I missed this. Is there a way to make this valid for the whole year? Uh, I found, I don't know what that means, but FYI, I found an amendment to WTO agreement article 10.2, WTO members regarding right. acceptance of the electronic COO acceptance. Do you want me to read that one again? Yeah, is that a question? Uh, yes, is there a way to make this valid for the whole year? Question. Oh, that's the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's do that part. Um, uh, no. <laughs> so the certificate of origin is generally a um, shipment specific. Uh, as you saw, it had item numbers, um, the transport details. So all that information goes on there. There are blanket certificate of origin forms, but they're mostly for the North America. They were created with the NAFTA agreement and now they're under the new agreement. So that's a separate form. It does have a blanket time on it, which is the whole year. Um, and it does not need to be stamped by the chamber. So it's a self-certification form. Uh, okay. The rest of it was just, and like anything with this chat, if you need further information, we will provide information just to you and your company uh, because some of it might be confusing, some of the questions. Here's one. So if you don't emboss them as that is what some of our customer requests and you issue online, can't we just print it in color so no originals need to be courier mailed, et cetera? Yes. Yep. You will print it yourself and that's the DIY option. Awesome. And 95% of them are done that way. All right. 
I think I covered, I, there was, might be one question at the top. Oh wait, she just said that. She likes DIY, smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> they are the best. <laughs> uh, Wendy, we're doing really good on time. And okay. I'm gonna just, log, I'm gonna go up to make sure I got all the questions. I think I missed one of them. Yeah. Do you have any other little things you wanna say that you might've forgotten? I will okay. say that when you register, um, along with your password and login, you will get a user guide and it covers what we just talked about. And it also covers how to add additional users within your company, um, a number of those things. And then uh, as far as support goes, we're, um, you can either contact the Cincinnati Chamber and ask them your questions and they'll forward them on to us if they don't know the answer, or you can contact us directly. Um, either way, we're happy to help. I found another question. Uh, hi, Wendy, can all users for a company see all certificate of origins issued for that company or only issued by them? No, they would be able to see all of them. So okay. if someone's out on vacation and someone else needs to access it, it's there. Yeah, or yeah. Okay, um, and then can you edit saved addresses in the consignee section? Yes, yes. I think we talked this about This was that. early, so yeah, and then, but okay. it was the very first question. And then can you create printed draft before you submit the COO to be yes, certified? Yes, and that's on okay. the client copy. Perfect. Um, I think there might be a couple more. Yeah, billing this for document. Uh, I think we have all the questions. Hannah, did you? Did you see any we, that I didn't get? No, I think we covered everything. And again, as Katie mentioned before, you know, there will be questions that pop up as you continue to do this. So you can reach out to Katie, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Barb. Um, on the title slide at the end here, we're going to go ahead and have those posted up for you. Um, and then as we send out a uh, follow-up email survey, we'll copy everybody on that email as well so you can reach out to us. Awesome. I saw another question come in oh. about legalizing documents through this platform, if it's only for C certificates of origin or if it can be other things. And um, it can be other documents. So if you have an EEI that you need legalized, you just upload it as an other document and we can do that. Or if you have a certificate of free sale or, um, you know, anything. A contracts, contracts, those kind of things. Yeah, we do them. We do not do personal documents. So we don't get your diploma legalized or we don't do uh, passports and, and uh, birth certificates. And legalize is not the same as notarize. Notarize is the local notary public, but legalize is generally the consulate. So it's not it's not required all the time, but when it is, it's a, uh, it's a hassle. <laughs> so we're here to help. <laughs> okay, and I'm trying to share the link here while I'm doing this. Uh, I can put that on here. I just I'm want to go ahead and clarify link. if yeah. I can really quick. I just want to go ahead and clarify. So there is a link to that Barb just dropped into the chat yes. where you'll find the application form, if your company is not yet signed up to have a login, if you need to get a login created, there is a form on that page that you'll go ahead and fill out and send to myself, Katie, Barb, and then we get it over to Wendy and her team. They'll create a login for you and they'll follow up separately. And as soon as that happens, you'll be able to go ahead and get started using that online portal that Wendy walked us through. Uh, let's see. Do you have an, an installed format for common FTA certificates? Example, U.S. to Korea, FTA, or do we need to upload that form ourselves if needed? Yeah, if you're using an FTA, you can upload that as an other document. Our certificate of origin application is for non-preferential. Um, so... I want to just, uh, again, thank Wendy for taking the time today um, to walk, to talk with our members. I like to play the game Stump Wendy. So um, 
she's never stumped any question. She's nodding. She knows she's very informative. So she's been an excellent resource um, for us this during this transition. Also, please feel free to email us at members at CincinnatiChamber.com. Um, this webinar has been recorded and uh, it'll be posted to the Chamber's website for you and your colleagues to reference in the future. And it's under actually, uh, if you go into our calendar of events, it'll show archived. Give us a little bit though, because there's some editing that we have to do. Um, uh, thank you again for joining us. Also, if you, if some of you and your companies have not renewed for uh, 2021, I can be that person to help you. I can take a credit card number over the phone, just email me directly. Um, and I think that's it. All right. Well, everybody have a safe uh, holiday season and uh, I brought the little prop in, Wendy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right.